Hey, greetings travelers, and welcome back to Traveling Guru, where we take an insider look at travel and tourism. I'm your host, Dennis Fouts, and this week, we are off to a place where some have been, but many more people want to go. We are off to Iceland. That's right. So we are going to... Oh, wow. Did you go to Iceland? Oh, uh, everybody. Hey, this is uh, Lindsay Fouts, the co-owner of Traveling Guru. Hey, travelers. What's... What You're you not doing? even doing this right. I'm not doing it right. You're not doing it right. <laughs> Why not? Okay, travelers, let me tell you how to get to Iceland. Let's go. Greetings, travelers. I'm your host, Lindsay Fouts, and this week we're in Iceland. Let's go. Hey, greetings, travelers. Now we're back with uh, Lindsay. Fouts, who not only is she the co-owner of Traveling Guru, she's also my wife. And now that we saw that wonderful introduction, uh, let's get right to it. So the top five questions that travelers need to know before they travel to Iceland. So the first question is, uh, what did you see and, and what would you like to have seen? So I was there for five days, which is great, and four nights. And I had four tours scheduled with my wonderful travel agent, the Traveling Guru, while I was there. The first tour that I went on, which I took directly after I got off the plane, was going to the Blue Lagoon. It is amazing. If you want to talk about an all-day spa to get rid of those aches and pains from any flight you take from the States or outside of the country, I definitely recommend Blue Lagoon. You can either get there in two ways. You can take the tour directly from the airport, and I mean directly from the airport, and they will take you right to the spa. They also have a wonderful, full building that you can store your luggage. So no need to worry about where your luggage is going to go while you're enjoying your wonderful spot. Yeah, that's great insider knowledge. And I can get, a, get that knowledge from any other blog or vlog I've ever seen. And uh, that's just great. What other tours did you do? So I also took a whale watching tour because my husband keeps trying to get me to see whales. And I yeah. will tell you that after... Going to Alaska, going to Hawaii... Uh, going living in California for two years off Pebble Beach, she has not never seen a whale. Yeah, five whale watching tours later, I still not seen a whale, yeah. and I think they only exist in museums. But I am told that Iceland is a wonderful place to see whales. That's right. So any people that have seen whales in Iceland, you're lucky. Yeah. Or if you want to go see whales, don't, don't travel take, with Lindsay. Don't take yeah, don't take yeah. me with you. So what was the third tour? So the third tour that I went to which is on, should be on everyone's bucket list, is the Golden Circle Tour. Mm. I think it's one of the best tours that they have to offer in Iceland. You saw waterfalls, you saw geysers, yeah. you saw the beauty and majestic that is mm -hmm. Iceland, and you got a lot of history. And for any Games of Thrones people, hey, yeah. GOT filmed in Iceland. Yeah. You saw a couple cool places there too. It, the winter is coming, and was it cold? It was cold. Yeah, so it's always cold. So winter was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So talk about that. Let's talk about your fourth one, though, because it kind of it was impacted by the by the winter. So the fourth tour that I signed up for was the Northern Lights tour, and that's really the reason that I went to Iceland. Mm -hmm. Because Northern Lights season, as many know, is about September to April, and I wanted to see the Northern Lights, and I've never seen them. So I went to Iceland to see them. Unfortunately, even though I had a very good week, with a great amount of activity, the cloud cover in Iceland prevented me to see the Northern Lights with the tour operator. I will tell you as you're looking through my pictures now, or you're seeing my pictures on the screen, that I did find a great couple that was nice enough to let me tag along, and we chased the Northern Lights, and at two in the morning, like a scene out of Independence Day, I saw the Northern Lights. Wow peek out through the clouds, yeah. and then they that's, were gone again. That's beautiful. It's a well-deserved trip. But let's go on to number two. Okay. Number two, the question for my wife, who does, by the way, all the packing, and you know, when I do all these videos, I'm like, hey, all these things I know and how I do, this is really what it comes to. So how did you pack for Iceland? So when I went to Iceland, or really before I went to Iceland, to check the weather, there's one thing I recommend, no matter where you're going on vacation, whether you're going to a sunny destination or a cold climate, check the weather, because the weather changes 
all the time. Yes. So the weather completely fluctuated within the two weeks of me going. But when I was leading up to my trip, I did pack in layers. Layers is a great way to pack for any cold adventure because as many layers as you can put on means there are a lot of layers for you to take off and regulate your temperature. So each day I think I wore at least two to three undershirts, anywhere from a running shirt to a turtleneck. I always had a sweater, I had a jacket, I had a scarf, <laughs> I had a great hat, I had gloves. She's like that, that kid in the Christmas story. He was like, just put your arms down when you get to school. I just I envision that. That's not what those pictures are showing you right now, I'm sure, but that's, right. that's how I envision it. I had some gloves. I always had a pair of socks, and I wore at least two pairs of pants. I'm a big fan of LuLaRoe, so I had a pair of leggings, and I always had a pair of thermals underneath, or a pair of thermals and yeah. a pair of jeans. Now, and from a guy's perspective of, of uh, packing, I would just say, you know, bring a couple shorts and just do the rest at the airport but that's bad packing. So, that is horrible so, packing. So, <laughs> so for, a, for a guy's perspective, I say, <laughs> come back to Traveling Guru yeah, and yeah. I'll show you how to pack really easily yeah. and very well. Yeah, all right. So that's number two. All right, okay. number two. All right, let's go to number three. All right, so now we're up at the number three, which is what is there to eat in Iceland? It, everyone needs to focus on this middle section. That's why I wanted number three to be about food uh, because it, even with all the knowledge I have about Iceland and traveling there, uh, it's the diet has really changed and it's a little more sophisticated. Well, I would call it sophisticated. If you're a meat and potatoes guy, it's more sophisticated. But please, share with us, share with us Iceland food. So Iceland food is a large array of everything you want to eat, which is great. I personally love my paleo diet, so I did a lot of paleo research before I went to Iceland and found that Iceland is not just, say, a meat and potatoes place. They don't just have fish, but they have a very big, large, and expanding vegan scene mm -hmm. within Iceland. So I had a lot of vegan food while I was there, out in restaurants. Great, a great black bean burger for people might think it's disgusting, but it was wonderful. I had vegetarian and vegan ice cream made directly at the ice cream shop, which you can see in the video right now. It was amazing. And even though I tried to expand my boundaries, mm -hmm. some of the food I ate in Iceland wasn't to my liking. So actually right now, let's cut away to uh, that experience. <laughs> let's go. Hey travelers, it's actually happening. I'm about to try fermented shark, even though I said I was never gonna try it when I got here, but never say never. This is how much fermented shark I get to try, so you know it got to be good or not good. We'll figure it out. Oh, and I have some Brennavin to wash it down. So, shark and alcohol can't be bad, right? Okay, wish me luck. One, two. Oh my god, it was okay at the beginning, but now, not okay, not okay, not okay. Oh, and Lindsay doesn't like alcohol, so this is going really well, guys. We'll talk about this later. So, fermented shark, that's something for everybody to think about. Yes, right? <laughs> okay. think very hard. <laughs> But you know, but you, but you know, this is my wife. She really gets into the culture, and she's is, I, it's awesome. I love it. I love it. So I'm glad I didn't eat it, but I love that she ate it. And now we all know what it is, and what is what it's like. All right, so let's go on to number action four. So now that you got there, uh, let's go to um, that number five, number four question, which is, please tell us about what you learned while you were there that you didn't know. So one of the things I found out since I've been back from Iceland is definitely a little bit more about how to budget for Iceland. I did do some research prior to getting to Iceland and I read all the blogs and I understood all the comments that Iceland was an expensive place to go to and the per day cost were probably going to be a little bit higher than I normally associated my vacations with. 
Coming back from Iceland, I can say that I didn't do the best in budgeting. I had the greatest time, but I probably could have budgeted a little bit more. I think my cost would have been more had I not had a hotel with a breakfast included. So I definitely stocked up on breakfast so that I wasn't hungry through most of the day. And if I did need something, they were small snacks. And I occasionally took some pastries with me from the breakfast buffet to get me through the day. <laughs> but I did go to little offshoots like the famous hot dog stand in Reykjavik. And then I really spent most of my money on dinner or getting into some of the sites yeah. in Reykjavik and those were about 10 to 20 dollars to get per site um, or and for dinner I think I spent anywhere from 20 to 40 dollars uh, per dinner cost. So do you think it's pretty realistic that your average traveler could be spending between 120 to 200 dollars in per, per day cost? besides the hotel, besides those are all sort of taken care of, just the getting around, what is that per, that spectrum between 120 to $200, is that about right? If you don't plan, you definitely spend on the higher end, but if you plan or you learn to use these wonderful things that Iceland has, like a great bus system that saved me tons of money on taxis, I think one taxi ride I took just out of sheer need to get from point A to point B in the quickest amount of time actually cost me $40 for one trip and that was a six minute trip. Oh, so I'm hearing this for the first time by the way. Really? So, Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> okay. So beware of taxis. They yeah. don't have Lyft and they don't have Uber. There you go. It may be coming but the bus cost $4.00 and 60 cents every time I wanted to take it and I had one hour after I got onto the bus to use the bus again for free which is a great thing especially if you're getting from point A to point B and that is anywhere in Iceland it is four dollars and sixty cents so if you're going from Reykjavik to another city or another town it's still gonna cost you four dollars and sixty cents to get on the bus no taxis save and budget and uh, get on the bus and use the bus app, which is amazing. The bus app, that's right. All right, great. All right, let's get to number five. Okay, so now number five, what is your, what do you think the process needs to be for people that want to plan their trip to Iceland? And remember, none of these listeners have ever been to Iceland. What what is the process they need to follow? So going to Iceland, I think you really need to know what you're going for. The main reason I went to Iceland was to go to see the Northern Lights. And if that's something that you want to do, make sure that's on the top of your list. And then let all the trips fall to, you know, fall right under them. The other thing I think you definitely should understand is that getting around Iceland is not as hard as it may seem. And it's a great thing to just try to figure out some of the wonderful sights you can see in Reykjavik or the other cities that you might be staying yeah. when you go to Iceland. The towns, the people are definitely friendly. I can tell you that I got lost a couple times in Reykjavik and I could ask almost anyone on the street and they directed me to the right way. Look up some of the cool blogs and sites for places that you may want to go that you may not even know existed. I wanted to go on a glacier tour and I couldn't fit it in to the time that I was there but lo and behold Reykjavik has a wonderful glacier museum which just opened in 2016 called the Perlum. It's got wonderful views and I got to see a glacier inside a museum. An amazing discovery for a small town that I didn't even know existed. Another thing that I definitely would suggest about planning is that the internet is everywhere. Oh, <laughs> Wi-Fi yeah. yeah. is amazing. I could tell you that when I was in my hotel I used the free Wi-Fi then as soon as I left my hotel, I was Wi-Fi free, so I couldn't use it. But as soon as I got back on a bus, mm. I had free Wi-Fi, so I could get to the next destination. And I basically Wi-Fi hopped. Every time I got on a bus, I went into a restaurant, or I went into my hotel, so I never felt like I was lost or couldn't find my way back. The other thing I would say is just enjoy 
as much time as you possibly can and find the off beaten paths. I found a great place to take some Viking photos and talk to a photographer that actually used his props for reenactments of Viking battles yeah. and it was amazing. And I think you can see that from my pictures. I had a great time, I felt really fierce, and I know they're going to cast me for the next Game of Thrones episode. <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much. So, uh, usually Lindsay's all behind the scenes um, for, with Traveling Guru, but I'd like to thank you for being here. Uh, and for all the listeners, what do we have to say to them? Thank you very much for being here. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Subscribe now. Subscri yeah, oh, yeah, like, right, like, share, and please comment. I really appreciate it. Thank you for going to Iceland and uh, coming back with all those great stories for us. So thank you very much. And everybody, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to email me or comment below. Yep. Bye, travelers. Bye, travelers. <laughs>